All right, thank you all for joining us today. We have some participants from this year's MEU Athens here to speak about how US MEU simulations differed from the European MEU simulation, like roles, rules, et cetera, what you learned by participating in a European MEU simulation and any advice you would give to prepare a future team member for their first European simulation. Um, whoever would like to start, go for it. Um, well, I think the biggest difference, first of all, was that I guess in an American competition, you're always focused on getting like the best delegation or best position paper award, but there were no awards at Model EU Athens. So everyone was really kind of focused on being productive and working together to pass a large piece of legislation, which I thought was really nice. And I really enjoyed because I feel like in a, like American situations, where I was like, am I talking enough? Am I talking too much? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here you could really focus on being productive with the group, which I thought was really good. Um, and then additionally, a big difference was that instead of being hand did either a couple short prompts for like ideas that we would discuss or just being handed kind of a topic such as we're going to tackle you know foreign policy looking at turkey or something like that instead we were handed two actual uh, one of them slightly modified but they were actual proposals from the commission to the parliament i was in the parliament um so we were working with like an actual piece of legislation and we you know you went into the nitty-gritty into the details and that was super different than american simulations where we've pretty much only worked in really broad ideas here we were looking at like like minute changes in the text and debating those and getting those passed it was really really different Yeah, I think to, to jump on Kate, uh, Kate's point on, uh, on that, because I also do have a little model UN experience, the not having awards really, really does change the whole dynamic. And it was a bit of annoying, but slightly joking, like having to explain to my friends when I come back that in Europe, they don't give awards and they're like, oh, well, like, you know, what's the point? But to Kate's point, when you don't have the uh, toxicity or the intensity of like having to like, oh, I have to win, I have to win, it does really become about substance. And the one thing that really struck me at first was just how, at least for the people who were speaking, um, they knew backwards and forwards every single like page within the legislation. And again, to case point, that's not something they usually do like in model UN or model EU where it's more uh, here in the US where it's more like broad spoke, but like they literally like it, like said, like the tiniest minutia in the word of the text was something that um, everybody at least seemed uh, uh, to be aware of, which is really interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I would completely agree um, with that point there about like the participant participants having a lot of knowledge about the topic beforehand. I think that um, at least with how I understand the college system works in Europe, um, I was in the European Court of Justice, so um, there were European law students while um, I was in the Court of Justice and I'm just an undergrad American student, so I didn't know anything about the European law um, processes and whatnot, uh, whereas they were actually studying it. So um, that was a big difference because um, in college conferences um, for Model EU and Model UN, in my experiences, everyone um, has much more of a general knowledge, but there was a lot of like people who had actual experience with the topics that we were discussing. So that was really cool. Yeah, um, I would agree with what everyone else said, um, especially about the lack of awards created a much different conference, which initially um, I was like, oh, I wish we had that. But then uh, after a bit, I was a lot more satisfied not having that pressure. Um, another thing that I know myself I tried to be aware of throughout the conference was just realizing that the majority of people there's native language was not English. And so, um, you know, speaking less quickly, um, trying not to use like extremely specific vocabulary just because there were points when I talked to some of my European colleagues and they were like, yeah, we don't know what, you know, X or Y person was saying because they were speaking so fast. Um, additionally, in, or in addition to that, there was definitely like an adjustment period where we were like the Americans before people actually liked us. And um, so, so I feel like we kind of had to prove ourselves in committee and then, um, it's a shame that we became good Americans rather than just like, oh, all Americans aren't horrible. Um, but, you know, it, it took time to get past those uh, overarching reductions. 
Yes, I definitely experienced a little bit of that, but I wouldn't say that was too prevalent in uh, the court of justice. I think probably because there were three Americans out of eight people. And since there were eight people, it was so small. Um, so we got to know each other pretty quickly. And I think we're all very curious about how each other's um, different cultures because most people were from different co countries. But uh, yeah, I would say that it wasn't as big of a problem in the court of justice because it was such a small committee, but there was a little bit of that as well. I would say also when it came to the roles, um, it was super different because I think normally in most American competitions I've been in, like if you're in the European parliament, you have members of parliament and then you have a chair and that's it. But in this competition, um, the commissioner was was played by someone who who played the role, and you know they had an agenda that were, they were bringing into it. They didn't didn't just present legislation; they also wanted to get it passed without changing it, and that was different. You also had lobbyists who came in, and they had like ideas for amendments and stuff like that. You'd like work with them, and they were trying to get their stuff passed. And then they also had like a journalist aspect of it, which like um was cool, but it did, that didn't really like change like the process of what we were doing as much. It just like added a, like a press conference, and at the end of the day, but it was just like really different. Where like we've never had anyone like acting as a commissioner before um, and having that role was like really different. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> um, to tie it back to like our earlier point about it not being about like us or like awards and then thus it makes it more about substance. It was really interesting for me, especially when we got into a whole lobbyist and the commissioners because they had to make, you know, 20 minute speeches and then there's back and forth in case because uh, I was also in parliament in case we had questions and just a level of complexity and seriousness that like, you know, these students who are like, you know, mostly undergrads, just like um, most of us was just very very uh different um from me because they they you know for in my mind i couldn't distinguish it from like an actual european union uh committee an actual european union debate an actual european union q a um then an actual like you know simulation and the seriousness of which everyone took it the way they carried themselves um was something that definitely really really made the whole experience um much better and especially the q a question because even though it didn't affect the job that we in the parliament or in council were doing i was also very Pleasantly surprised that even though there was some less than hard work in, in council the first day, uh, that did come up uh, in very, you know, loud terms, um, or not necessarily loud, but very direct terms during the, the Q&As. So you all have touched a little bit on the different roles that you uh, had in MU Athens, were any of these roles uh, something completely new that you hadn't done in a domestic circuit? And if so, how did you prep for that? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I've never done anything like the Court of Justice before. As far as I can tell, it's not particularly common in uh, model EU in Europe either. Um, so I just did all the research I could do um, and hoped for the best when I got there. I like read the, they gave us uh, court procedures and um, like example cases and whatnot, and sort of kind of like an instruction on how to act like a European Union lawyer. And so that was really helpful. And I also helped that even though there were European law students, um, most of the people in our committee were about as confused as I was because this was a relatively new style of committee. So we are all, it was just kind of all a learning curve for all of us and it was really nice. I had pretty much done exclusively European Council simulations and not European Parliament simulations. So it's a little different, but I will say like, even though I think we were expected to approach these topics with like a high level of detail and knowledge, they provided a lot of information for us, a lot more than I had been provided in American simulations. Not only did they provide the documents, but we also got these content guides that included really helpful things such as like, here are controversial clauses. And they said like why these are controversial and how they've been debated. There were also little sections 
on like how these different measures would affect different countries, um, how different parties were approaching these things inside the European Parliament. So instead of being like cut adrift, we were given a good amount of information to go off of. And then they also provided us with a lot of resources that they thought would be useful for us to look at. So even though like the expectations were high, we were given like a really great uh, launch pad that I had never gotten anything like that before in an American simulation. Usually it's like, here are topics, here's your country, write a position paper and that's it. Yeah, they even gave specifics for, um, you know, different parties and different countries saying what your position would be, which made it a lot easier to research, uh, which was advantageous. Um, like Kay was saying, so both of us were in the European Parliament rather than the Commission. And so for myself at prior MEU stuff, I'd only represented a country, whereas in the European Parliament, I was representing a party belonging to a country. And so I was the left Greece. And um, something that they said to us in the like preparation uh, resources was that your political party mattered more than your country. And so, you know, we were aligning with leftists and Greens from like very different parts of Europe rather than saying like, oh, Greece is closely allied with X and Y European country. Um, so it just created a really different dynamic there. Yeah, for me as well, like I've been in the council and I've been in the commission, but I was never in parliament before. So on the one hand, it was really exciting. It was also exciting, like the venue that they had, because it felt more, uh, I don't know, like real, uh, as opposed to like, you know, just being in some, you know, regular uh, building. Um, but the dynamics definitely come when you are in parliament and you're representing, like uh, Jacob said, a small, like, you know, small part of a, of a country as opposed to like an entire country, you know, with its own political agendas or things like that. So I was also part of the Greens for, for Portugal. And then it was also <clears throat> a regionalist party. So definitely having the little background information uh, to give more information as to like, you know, the need greedy of your party was uh, was very uh, helpful, but then the whole dynamic of having to sit in the building with about 30 or 40 of us um, having to vote on procedures, having to nominate each other for certain things, like to go and inform the council of what was going on um, was definitely a brand new dynamic, but I really, um, I really appreciated it in terms of being, you know, inside the council or in the, in the commission. Could each of you uh, perhaps share major takeaway from participating in MU Athens or something major you learned uh, from participating in the European circuit? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start with this one. Um, so as someone who obviously, you know, we're all like you're focusing one way or another, um, I made this joke to my friends in Europe and like over here that as someone who has always had very strong opinions, so we say about the EU, um, having actually taken part in an EU simulation in Europe with a bunch of Europeans that are like around our age and interests and actually were born and raised in a world where they've only ever known the EU and their perspective and dynamics on the EU is vastly different than perhaps their parents or definitely their grandparents or even people who study Europe outside the EU. Uh, it definitely gave me a much more uh, it gave me much more appreciation for what the European Union does, ostensibly what it's supposed to do for its citizens, uh, being in Parliament and having to tussle and back and forth uh, with the Council. It's a lot, it's arduous, it takes a long time, but overall it definitely gave me a bigger appreciation that like these people aren't there, you know, for X, Y, and Z, they're there ostensibly because they care about Europe, they care about the citizenry, and they more or less work together to try and actually be more uh, inclusive in the sense of working together towards passing legislation as opposed to sniping at each other for like, you know, small political points. So that definitely gave me a more appreciation for the EU as an institution. Yeah, one thing that was interesting for me as well was just seeing like, um, especially with the lack of awards, being able to defend the position of my political party and country, like to the greatest extent possible. Um, in prior MEU and MUN committees, I've definitely tried to like step back a little, uh, make more compromise in order to work better with other delegates and get things passed. Whereas in this, it was like, you know, if my political position doesn't want this measure passed, we're not going to pass it. And if it's something we think is beneficial, but it's coming from the right wing, then I would abstain on it so that it passed, but so that I didn't like overtly support it. And just seeing how those dynamics worked was um, a really big change from prior conferences. I think um, 
I got a, a, a kind of like Danny said, a kind of sense of how the trilogue works a lot more. Um, and then also, I think like a lot of times when we study, especially in like political science classes, you talk about European Parliament, it's the newest part, of, you know, it recently got more power in the European Union and doesn't have the right of legislative initiative and yada yada. So mainly it's the commission that's running things. Um, but I was like, we were making huge changes to these documents. And I was like, wow, like it is insane the amount of power that we have. And like, obviously you have to work with the council and with the commission and everyone has to agree to get it passed. But um, it was just super interesting to kind of see like, like this body that, you know, we consider to be maybe, you know, obviously important, but maybe one of the less important ones of the European Union is actually, no, it's doing huge, huge things. And just to kind of see that in practice is always really different than studying in a textbook for sure. My main takeaway uh, perhaps will not be as helpful for future the, um, participants, but my main takeaway is that EU law is very, very dry. <laughs> and um, there, the, it's, it's, I don't know how else to say it other than it was dry they get straight to the point and um, yeah it was definitely an interesting experience uh, because my only um, background with law has been like I don't know like tv shows and so it's a lot more dramatized there but um, yeah I would recommend if you're really interested in knowing if you're in uh, if you want to become a lawyer or not take it in like a simulation like this one because it will really show you I think how it's actually like to be a lawyer instead of just with the dramatic like the dramatization I don't know if that's a word of um, lawyer life from tv and movies. So we're going to segue into what's some advice you would give to help prepare a future MEU team member or someone who's interested in joining the team? Uh, what's some advice uh, as they prep for their first European MEU simulation? My advice would be to look at and annotate, maybe heavily annotate the actual legislative proposals that you're being handed before you get there. Don't just look at the content guide and like just be, like be ready with your position paper, like have notes on like what you think about different clauses or things that you might want to change because you're gonna get there and people are gonna start running and you're gonna need to know like what your party position is gonna respond to or support or not. Yeah, I definitely, uh... Uh, hit on that definitely read the background uh or the pro, uh, proposition backwards and forwards and more than that more than just like reading it like actually try and understand it because one thing and i wondered if the fact that like i said you know these are actual europeans that like you know uh follow this that because they know it in a little bit uh more than like more than us since you know they're actually like living it and breathing it it's really nice not just to read the background but actually understand like you know what the purpose is what it actually is going to do on like you know the ground level but also like why why the commission or why the European Union itself is taking this huge initiative to pass this huge piece of legislation because believe it or not those things will definitely uh, come up in conversation and in debate um, uh, during conference. Yeah also just like outside of committee um, you know be nice be approachable uh, there's a lot of socializing that happens outside of committees and hanging out with your European colleagues and you find that they will be a lot nicer to your proposals the next day if you are nice to them. Uh, and so, you know, in addition, just showing like there were some people that I hated in committee, like I hated them so much because of their uh, political positions, but then um, hanging out with them outside of committee, I was like, oh, these are these are good, decent people. Um, and so I guess treat in committee and out of committee, not the same because in committee is more important, but like do, do pay attention to interactions out of committee as well. Well, I feel like there's not much I can add now that they've all said sort of what I was thinking. Um, perhaps try to get all of your work done before you go to um, uh, uh, um, something like this because you're not gonna have time, even if you think you're gonna have time. So, and that would be my um, advice because that's a mistake I made and was unnecessarily stressful. Thank you for sharing all that. So now that you've, or now you're all the first teams we sent to a EU or European simulation, uh, do you have any 
ideas for the future of MU teams for UNC, FIU, Pitt? Yeah, I know um, some of us were talking with people about the possibility of hosting an MEU conference at UNC. Um, we don't know the specifics of whether that would be for Americans, for internationals, how the funding would come, et cetera, but very much in the incubator, we think it would be a really cool way um, to show that like there is broad interest at UNC and in the US, in the European Union, as well as uh, you know, a lot of the Europeans that I met were like, oh my God, I would love to come to your little American college town and see what it's really like. And so I think it would be a fun opportunity for like cultural exchange. We even have people volunteering to chair already. So, you know, we could hit the ground running. Yeah, for me, I definitely, cause we don't have that big of a team here at, um, at FIU. So it's definitely has propelled me to try and, um, because we have a really big uh, model UN team, but we don't have like a model EU team. Some people don't even know that we have a model EU team. Uh, so there's definitely like a lot of interest, like Jacob said. So I'm gonna try my best to try and make an actual like team uh, like spirit because there is a, like a lot of interest, but there's just, you know, not like that much available uh, information, at least, you know, so far as um, FIU is uh, concerned. They keep saying all of my ideas. <laughs> um, no, yeah. And perhaps um, just trying to uh, advertise it a little bit more. I know that since this is the first year, it's, um, it's, a, it's a learning curve. But um, yeah, because I am also part of Model UN here at UNC. So anybody I talked to did not know that we existed. But I know that they would be really interested in it. And so if we could garden more interest, that'd be really cool and really helpful for trying to do something like a uh, conference here and whatnot. Yes, especially for advertising, if you all could please share with your networks. I know you're all part of big networks with people who would be interested in this. So please share. Uh, and yes, so thank you all so much for sharing your insight and what you learned from MU Athens. Does anyone have any final thoughts? Oh, Katie. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, I also wanna say thank you, of course, but I also wanted to ask you more about your thoughts um, for a future conference, but I, but I would like you to um, also have the chance to say your final remarks, but I, I'm getting ready to write, um, you know, a, a Jean Monnet Center of Excellence grant, which lasts for three years, it would start in August. So if we're gonna apply for funding, this is the moment. Um, so if you really are serious about doing something like this, um, we need to talk about it in the first half of January. Yeah, I would love to probably possibly have a meeting with Euro, Euro slash TAM slash Euro TAM slash MEU. Um, um, Okay. Uh, team members to talk about this because I would love to host a conference here at UNC. I think it'd be really cool. Okay. I'd also be into going to more international conferences, of course. I, I hope the two are both possible within the grant um, because I think that both have uh, vast benefits to them. Okay. It's not as much money as we would like. <laughs> I'll just say that, but but I would really love to to brainstorm with um, with whoever's interested because um, I, I I don't know you know like we would need to just briefly sketch out a plan you know essentially when who would how many people how many people we could invite what we would need for it so we could you know put that in the grant now. It's exciting. Well, let me go. Even though I don't go to U, uh, UNC, if you need some help, definitely. Uh, happy oh yeah, to yeah, no, I wasn't. To, you know, spread the news down here. I mean, this this is the the, the team has no knows knows no boundaries. Danny, you're totally part of this um, because, of course, you would be here then, making it happen. So yeah. um, we'd put funding in for domestic <laughs> folks to get here. So um, please, no, 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 that was a misunderstanding. Absolutely. Um, we want everybody participating because this is the thing, right? There's no sense doing an international, you know, or a, um, hosting it here and bringing both European and, and US folks or, you know, based in the US folks um, 
to Chapel Hill, we would, you know, there's no reason why we'd want to keep it small, right? We'd want to have um, folks interacting from all over. That's what makes it exciting, right? So yeah, so um, Kayla and I can talk about some potential times to get together and then, um, yeah, we'd really like your, your, I'm just, I just, yeah, I just finally maybe cracked the, they, they changed the whole budgeting structure. So I think I cracked the nut, but we'll see. <laughs> so I'd love to chat. This is the, the delegation is going to be so thrilled. I just have to say that. Like I've been taking furious notes and for us to be able to say to the delegation how much you've learned, right? And Danny, your insights and saying, you know, what it's like to be next to a European who lives and breathes this every day. And then Kay, for you saying like, well, the parliament seemed like, you know, back of the line <laughs> in class and then being part of it seemed very different, you know. All of your points, Jake and Mariana, too, of course, this, this is, you know, the fact that um, that going through the simulation isn't just, you know, uh, okay, um, it's, you know, we got to go to Athens, cool, but that you've really learned things and, and this idea of, you know, negotiating it outside of committee, um, you know, all these different pieces about how it works is, is just what exactly what the, the EU delegation is about. And so for us to have um, and how different it was from the simulations in the US, right? You know, only being with undergrad, other undergraduates and only doing the council, this is a really a different opportunity. So I'm so glad that they're supporting it and, um, and I can't wait to tell them all these things. They'll be very happy. Yeah, well, I think uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, sorry, but it was also like, a, a, to your point, yeah. a lot of work. So, you know, yeah. for people who might not think they're like, oh no, it's gonna be, you know, a vacation. No, 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 it's definitely nine to five is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah that is sort of related to what i was about to say it's a bit random but um i think it'd be really really cool uh if it is at all possible if we could have at least like one more day for sightseeing because at least in athens everything was closed by 5 p.m um mm -hmm. and opened at like 8 and that's exactly when we were in committee so um and all the historical sites were closed so if you weren't interested in nightlife or if you had um you're full of it by like the first night, uh, you had less stuff to sightsee in Athens, but uh, yeah, that's really it. No, that's helpful to know. Um, you know, this year, when I was explaining to John this morning um, about this trip, and I, I have sort of said it every single day since you guys got back, I don't know how we managed to get that approval. Um, the fact that you guys went in that teeny, tiny, tiny sweet spot window, um, because as you know, when you got back, you know, all travel was shut down for the month of December. You know, this is why it's so great that Laura got to go to Hong Kong. You know, all these things, it's just really remarkable. So we were not, we were being very careful in terms of, um, you know, any extra days or all this kind of stuff because we really just wanted to get the approval for the trip itself. So these are things we can definitely take into consideration when hopefully next year the approval process will be, will look very different in a good way, I mean. So <laughs> thank you for understanding and appreciating that piece of it. Absolutely. I think people have touched on this, but I would just like to emphasize that it was very go, 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 like the entire conference, like the schedule was packed the entire time. And then you maybe got like one hour of downtime to basically change for dinner. And then everyone was out again. So get all of your homework done before you go, because I know it was right before exams. And I remember all of us sitting in the airport, just like furiously typing. I remember one night I stayed in to like submit a forum post for one of my classes. And everyone was like, oh, do you want to come out and see the city of Club? I was like, I have to get this done. And it was just like, it was insane. It was so crazy. Um, there was like no rest at all. <laughs> well, that our, our Dean and Provost will love to hear that. <laughs> Oh, well, then may I add that I spent an entire night writing a paper, so <laughs> oh, it's sorry. okay. It worked out in the end. But yeah, that that is, I would really, really, really like to emphasize that point that Kay made, because I know that I would have had a lot more fun if I had been able to rest more um, instead of just focusing on a schoolwork that I had neglected to get done earlier or ask for an extension. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it was a very low sleep awesome. week, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and do not regret going at all. Great. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, me too. It was the experience of a lifetime. I am so happy I got to go. Oh.
Thank you so much, Katie, for making this happen. It was awesome. No, seriously, thank you guys. You guys are the best. Once in a lifetime experience. We're so glad. Well, we only sent the best, so. <laughs> this is really great. We're so glad that you, um, yes, that you got to participate, that we, that the approval went through, that, you know, we could make this work for all three universities. Um, yeah, this is really exciting to hear your feedback. Thank you for taking the time. Yes, and Jake, to answer your question, spring 2022 is very up in the air for as far as travel. Um, oh, yeah. UNC is signed up for uh, University of Pittsburgh MEU and West Coast MEU. Um, and then uh, applications for Indiana, I'll be submitting our team in January but um, to be determined if it'll be in person or online. Um, everyone's just kind of holding their breath and seeing what's gonna happen. Yeah. So we, we have the dates and we have the funding. So we're just waiting to see, um, yeah, how UNC goes with the travel or whether the, whether the simulations will even be in person or not themselves, right? So, um, oh, and yeah. sorry. Uh, one last thing, I really appreciate how you guys are so uh, helpful with the funding because um, I know that I will not have been able to travel or participate in this kind of stuff if it wasn't funded so extensively. And I'm so, so happy that it was um, because that really opens the door to so many other kinds of students who, so they don't have to worry about money in order to experience something so amazing like this. So I really did appreciate that part. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Thank you for saying that. It's definitely on our minds all the time. Yes. Um, does anyone have any final uh, statements or anything they want to add? Yeah. Uh, Jacob and Kay were amazing in partnering. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> awesome. Um, we really do appreciate you all taking time over your break to share your thoughts because I'm working on the interim grant report for this, or the grant that funded all of this. So this is perfect to put in and just glowing reviews is exactly what we want to send to the EU. So we really appreciate you all taking the time to do this. Okay, and so everyone is signed up for the for the team for next spring, right? So you're all like on board, staying in, nobody's leaving. You don't have to reapply. Um, nope. We just want to make sure you're you're in. Yes, you're still interested. <laughs> yeah, you got me nervous there when you said signed up, but yes, I'm absolutely 100% going to be part of it next semester. Great. Yes, and please share with anyone you think will be interested. Um, applications are. I think do like mid January. So yes, thank you all so much. Um, yeah, just be in touch. Let us know if you need anything. Um, and we look okay. forward to doing MEU in the spring. Happy break, get some sleep people. Yes, stay healthy, <laughs> sleep. Thanks y'all, bye. Thank you so thank much you. guys. Likewise. Bye. Great to see you today. Yay.